We're here in Nismo headquarters in Tokyo, Japan for the launch of the Nissan Zod Le Mans Challenger for 2014. I've got Darren Cox, the Nissan Global Motorsport Manager with me. Now Darren, tell me why are we doing this? It's a pretty ambitious project, but uh, an exciting one for Nissan. Yeah, sometimes I think it's a bit too ambitious. Uh, we've, uh, we were trying to run the car here at uh, Fuji this weekend to do a full lap on electric power. Um, but we um, unfortunately haven't been able to do that and it really just shows the level of engineering uh, innovation that we've got to come up with with this car you know electric vehicles on the road are really starting to become reliable and well accepted um, but in the, trying to get these things running in racing conditions uh, with the amount of power we need to work with is very challenging but we're confident that by the time we get to Le Mans next year we'll be able to do uh, one lap in every 13 uh, that will be on full electric power and, and that's an exciting challenge but it is very very difficult to, to achieve. We're all talking about hopefully a 2015 LMP1 project. Is this Garage 56 option important for both Nissan and also the ACO in, in learning how this technology works and framing a rule package for the future? Well, I think it's uh, important in a number of ways for Nissan. I think the first point, it's important that we can start learning about um, different areas of uh, the technology that's in existence today on, on LMP1 vehicles. So everything we've got in this, whether it be the communication systems, whether it be the tub, whether it be working with Michelin, you know, we need to do that because we have been out of the top level of uh, prototype racing for a number of years. So we've got to learn that. Um, but also from a, a marketing and internal motivation point of view you know we need to show people internally how important Le Mans is and the best way to do that is to do it with electric vehicles electric vehicles are our big push uh, on the road and to do the first program as a works team uh, with electric vehicles show people that this really is exciting because amazingly some people don't necessarily focus on Le Mans all us guys us petrol heads know exactly what Le Mans is it's an introduction to the rest of the business about what Le Mans is ahead of us going and making huge amounts of engineering finance and resource commitments to Le Mans uh, to do it in this way is really beneficial to us from a commercial point of view as well as a technical point of view. Ben, you've obviously got a lot of experience designing and developing racing cars. Just put it in perspective for us, how difficult is it to design a car that will do a lap of Le Mans only on electric power? I think the, the challenge is the electric element of doing a lap at Le Mans. Yes, I've designed lots of racing cars. This is a fascinating project because the powertrain has really not been done in this way before. And it's a very, very big challenge to actually store enough energy in a battery that is light enough to allow the car to do the performance is the challenge. And in this case, we've managed to get enough um, megajoules of energy stored during braking events in the weight of battery around 120 kilos that's our upper threshold for achieving the cornering capability of the car um, to allow us to do one lap under a pure electric drive um, at racing speeds. So how far through the program would you say you are at the moment? Obviously we've got until June next year for Le Mans, but we were hoping to see it do a lap of Fuji this weekend. I understand it's not quite ready. Well, we, we really, really wanted to show everybody uh, a lap at Fuji. Um, being here in uh, Nissan's home country and showing the Japanese fans uh, this exciting project was a, an opportunity too good to miss. So we went for it. We, we, we tried to make it possible. Um, but in fact, you know, the car only touched the ground two weeks ago and it's uh, the car will run, but it's going to be in a very measured, subdued way, um, just to, as a taster of what's to come. Um, but it's a, it is a measure of the challenge that um, we, you know, we hoped that every egg would hatch and every chick would fly. But in this particular case, um, we've got a couple of things that we needed to change and we couldn't get the components um, quickly enough to allow us to put the real parts in the car for, for the run. Obviously the electric component is the headline act here in this in this program, but tell us, obviously the rest of it's pretty important, the efficiency of the rest of it to make the electric lap work. Um, the shape, obviously pretty distinctive, we've seen it on the delta wing, just explain why, why we end up at this triangular shape. So, for the battery capacity to be viable, to drive the car at the speed we want to drive for the endurance we need to achieve, basically 13 and a half kilometers flat out racing speeds, um, we had to make the rest of the car extremely light and we had to get very efficient downforce out of the car and we had to get very low rolling resistance. So the combination of uh, parameters required by the battery drove the design of the car. 
And I think it's very important to realize that the car is the way it is for for purely functional reasons that we achieve the low drag and the lightweight and the very uh, low rolling resistance from the Michelin tires. So this is um, really the story of why the car is the way it is. It makes better downforce, it, it's lighter weight this way and it has the cornering and braking and acceleration performance um, as well as the top speed from uh, low rolling resistance.